Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following are the busted species found in India? Great Indian Bustard, Lesser Floricon, McKean Bustard, Sandcrows. The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference in the PIB article which makes a reference to the Great Indian Bustard. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into which are the types of bustards that are found in India, there are four species of bustard. One, what we have is the McKean's bustard. So third statement is right. Then what we have is the lesser floricon. The second statement is also right. And we all know for the fact that great Indian bustard is found in India. So we have one, two and three. But fourth is not the bustard. The other bustard that we have in India happens to be the Bengal floricon. So what are the four types of bustards that we have? What we have is the Great Indian Bustard, McKean's Bustard, Lesser Floricon as well as the Bengal Floricon. When we speak about the Great Indian Bustard, historically, traditionally, it was found in much of the Indian subcontinent. But now, its presence has shrunk by more than 10%. Among the heaviest birds with the flight, these Great Indian Bustards also prefer grasslands as their habitat. Being terrestrial birds, they spend most of their time on the ground with occasional flights and as as they go, they also meet their disastrous end when they meet the power transmission. So the major threat that these great Indian busters feel is that this bird is heavy. And since they are heavy, as they move in their flight, they also move across these power transmission lines in Rajasthan, Gujarat, so on and so forth and ultimately meet the sad demise as well. So remember, they feed on insects, lizards, grass, seeds, so on and so forth and is also considered the flagship bird species of the grassland and hence it is also considered as the barometer of the health of the grassland ecosystems. So what are the major threats to these busted species? One, as they are heavy birds, as they take their flight, they hit the power transmission and they die and at the same time they thrive on the grasslands. There are a number of developmental activities taking place in the grasslands and there is also development of agricultural activities as well. This happens to be the major threat when it comes to the busted species. In order in order to ensure that some of the measures are taken for their conservation, this article goes on to say that it is listed in the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, which has the highest degree of legal protection from hunting. Important habitats of the Great Indian Bustards are designated as national parks or centuries for their better protection. The species has been identified for the conservation efforts under the Species Recovery Program of the Centrally Sponsored Scheme. Conservation breeding of the Great Indian Bustard has been undertaken in collaboration with Rajasthan, Gujarat and Maharashtra Forest Department. Sites for establishment of conservation breeding centers for Great Indian Bustard and Lesser Floricon have been identified in consultation with the State Departments of Rajasthan and Gujarat and the Ministry also provides financial assistance to the states and the Union Territories under the centrally sponsored scheme called as the Development of Wildlife Habitats for Conservation of Wildlife including the Great Indian Indian Bustard. So basically, the government has taken n number of these steps to conserve this species. In 2015 as well, the central government launched the GIB Species Recovery Program. Under this, the WII and the Rajasthan Forest Department have jointly set up conservation breeding centers where the great Indian Bustard eggs were harvested from the wild. They were incubated artificially and hatchlings were also raised in the controlled environment as well. These are some of the measures for conservation and protection of great Indian Bustard. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements with respect to Pariway scheme are true? It includes a single registration and single sign-in for all types of clearances like forest, wildlife and CRZ. The system has been designed, developed and hosted by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. It offers a framework to generate economic growth and strengthens sustainable development through e-commerce. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference of Parivesh portal on the PIP article. Let us try and understand what is this Parivesh portal. Parivesh basically stands for 
proactive and responsive facilitation by interacting and virtuous environmental single window hub this happens to be an initiative of the ministry of environment so anything to do with forest wildlife and crz that will be dealt by the forest ministry so the second statement which reads the system has been designed developed and hosted by the ministry of commerce and industry this statement is wrong that is because when it comes to parivesh it is about a portal developed by the ministry of environment with respect to wildlife coastal regulation zone so on and so forth what is the intent and objective of the parivesh portal basically this offers a single window solution by process automation what do you mean by process automation let's say for example we have one of the private companies the private companies wants to come up with one of the developmental programs so what it requires is the permission or the license from the government of india so if it goes to the traditional process it goes through a lot of red tape which means there is delay and also the ease of doing business will also comparatively reduce over the period of time and at the same time the cost for this particular company will also increase if it is red tape then corruption will also increase in order to prevent all these lacunas that were existing in the system what we have is an online system that is now developed which is called as the parivesh portal so this basically offers a single window for all the business units and for those people who are wanting to develop so that they get their clearances from the central government so basically all the major clearances will be done through data synchronization making use of the technologies transparent and effective decision making without even compromising on the environmental safeguards and the standards so without compromising on all these environmental safeguards they would not be giving the permission so this is also in line with the spirit of digital india and it also captures the doctrine minimum government and maximum governance through this particular initiative so with this initiative the ministry of environment has made sure that it is making use of the technology to ensure that there is ease of doing business and at the same time it is also safeguarding the environment as well so it is streamlining all the clearances process with respect to the environmental safeguard and also remember when it comes to the parivesh portal it further espouses this very thought of digital india as well now let's look into the next practice question consider the following statements on the national plan for conservation of aquatic ecosystems the npca is a conservation program for lakes only it is a centrally sponsored scheme implemented by the ministry of environment forest and climate change and covers various activities such as interception diversion and treatment of wastewater shoreline protection and lakefront development which of the statements given above is a incorrect since it is asking for the incorrect statement the answer to this is one only why have we taken this practice question because of the reference to the national plan for conservation of aquatic ecosystem scheme let us try and understand what are these statements when you look into the first statement the npca is a conservation program for the lakes only this happens to be a wrong statement why it is not just the lakes but it also promotes the conservation and protection of the wetlands as well so it is wetlands as well as the state when we speak about this national plan for the conservation of aquatic systems this was created by combining national lake conservation plan and national wetlands conservation program and this happens to be a centrally sponsored scheme yes the second statement is right what is a centrally sponsored scheme this will have the contributions made by the central government and it will also have the contributions made by the state government as well so the cost sharing basis between the central government and respective state governments take place as part of the centrally sponsored scheme under the npca scheme the central assistance is also based on the proposals received from the state government which means that the state government makes the proposals the central government allows it and then these proposals will also have to be in line with the guidelines given by the central government and it also meets the budget availability given by the central government as well so the second statement is also right the first statement is wrong so the answer to this is one only why because it is asking for the incorrect statement so this scheme basically aims at the holistic conservation and restoration of the wetlands for achieving 
desired water quality, improve the biodiversity in that particular area and comprehensively ensure that the ecosystem is safe and intact. It also aims at promoting mainstreaming of the wetlands along with formulation, implementation of integrated management plans, capacity development and research when it comes to the ecosystem as a whole. There are various activities that are taken place. One is the interception, the other is the cleaning, desilting and deweeding, stormwater management, bioremediation, catchment area treatment, lake beautification, survey and demarcation, biofencing, fisheries development, weed control, biodiversity conservation education, awareness creation and community participation. Only when we have all the stakeholders that participate, that is when we would be able to implement it. As part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section that there is one of the reports called as the National Wetland Decadal Changes Atlas. So this atlas is released by one of the institute. Which institute releases this is what you have to put on the comment section. So basically, with the help of the National Wetland Decadal Change Atlas, it basically depicts the changes that takes place in the wetlands and suitable measures will also be taken by the state government as well as the respective government. So basically, what you have to put on the comment section is who has developed this National Wetland Decadal Change Atlas is what you have to put on the comment section. Now let's look into the next practice question. In the context of monitoring of arsenic level in water supplied through Jal Jeevan Mission, consider the following statement. In India, the current limit specified for total arsenic is 0.1 mg per litre. JJM was started in 2016 with the aim to provide pipe water supply to every household by 2024. Long term exposure to arsenic from drinking water and food can cause skin lesions. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference to arsenic level in water supply through JJM, we have taken this practice question. This practice question is taken from the PIB. Let us try and understand what are these statements. When it comes to the JJM, what we have is this program which was started in the year 2019. So it is not 2016 but it was a program which started in 2019 where it aims to provide pipe water to every household by the year 2024. When we consider the arsenic poisoning as given in this article, there are a number of states which have been hit by the arsenic poisoning or what we have is the contamination of the water. Let's say for example, we have the West Bengal, Assam, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, all these states are impacted when water is polluted by arsenic. Assam in fact has one of the highest share of such people who have been impacted by arsenic consumption. So in India, the current limit specified for total arsenic is not 0.1 but instead it is 0 0.01 mg per litre. So it is not 0.1 mg but instead it is 0 0.01 mg per litre. This is very important from the preliminary examination point of view. So under the Jal Jeevan mission as per the existing guidelines that is the Bureau of Indian Standards IS 10500 standard it has clearly specified that the limit specified for total arsenic is about 0 0.01 mg per litre. So the first statement is wrong, the second statement is wrong, third statement is right because the long term exposure to arsenic from drinking water and food can cause cancer and skin lesions. So the immediate consequences of consuming the arsenic happens to be vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, there, are ex there is muscle cramping as well and it can also result in death in extreme cases on a long term exposure. What we will have is cancer and skin lesions and at the same time it will be associated with cardiovascular disease and diabetes as well and children who are exposed to this will also have impact on the cognitive development and increased death during the adulthood. These are the long term consequences. In order to overcome all these issues there have been some of the measures which have to be taken. What are those measures? Substitute high arsenic sources such as groundwater with low arsenic microbiologically safe sources such as rainwater and treated surface water. Discriminate between high arsenic and low arsenic sources. For example, test water for arsenic level and paint tube belts or hand pumps 
with different colors blend low arsenic water with high arsenic water to achieve an acceptable arsenic concentration level install arsenic removal system either centralized or domestic and ensure the appropriate disposal of the removed arsenic these are some of the measures that we would be able to take up in fact we also have the guidelines issued by the central government to the states and the union territories where they have been advised to carry out testing of water quality on a periodic basis once in a year they have to conduct chemical and physical parameter tests and twice in a year they have to conduct bacteriological parameters and take remedial actions wherever it is necessary now let's look into the next practice question mixture of which one of the following pairs of gases is the cause of occurrence of most of the explosions in mind hydrogen and oxygen oxygen and acetylene methane and air carbon dioxide and methane the answer to this is methane and air this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2008 as part of the assignment you have to put on the comment section why explosion occurs when there is methane and air in that particular area so a mixture of methane and air can cause the explosion why does it occur is what you have to put on the comment section now let's look into the fact of the day the fact of the day for today's discussion is mp latch scheme what is this mp latch scheme this stands for member of parliament local area development scheme under this scheme every mp whether it is Rajya Sabha or lok sabha has the choice to suggest to the district collector of that particular district for works to the tune of five crore per annum to take it up in his or her constituency so if he or she happens to be a Rajya Sabha member of parliament they can recommend work in one or more district in that particular state where he or she has been elected let's say for example we have one of the Rajya Sabha MPs let's say they are selected from the state of Maharashtra or from the state of Karnataka but this person may be a resident or a domicile of a different state as well but if he is selected under one of the states he can recommend the this amount of ficros can be used for one or more district in that particular state the nominated members of the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha may select any districts from any state in the country for implementation of their choice of work under this particular scheme and do note this particular initiative was under the Ministry of Rural Development initially but now it is under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation so the local area development known as MP Latch is a government scheme launched on 23rd of December 1993 this central sector scheme was developed as an initiative to enable the parliament members to recommend developmental work in their constituencies based on the locally felt needs these developmental works mainly focused on areas of national priorities such as drinking water education public health sanitation road so on and so forth the scheme members of parliament local area development was started by prime minister pv narsimha rao the scheme is now administered by the ministry of statistics but earlier it was under the ministry of rural development what are the features it is a government funded scheme and this happens to be a non-lapsable scheme which means that once the money is given to this particular constituency it can be used even after the financial year what generally happens let's say for example during the budget if a particular program is getting about thousand crores it happens to be a lapsable one which means this particular scheme will have to be used in that financial year but when it comes to the mp latch scheme it happens to be a non-lapsable fund which means even after the financial year end the money that is present as part of this will continue to be part of the same scheme as well so the initial assistance under the mp latch scheme was 5 lakh from 1998 to 99 onwards the amount has been increased 2 crore per mp and currently it is about 5 crore per mp the mps basically have a recommendatory role under the scheme they recommend the choice of works to the concerned district authorities who implement these works by following the established procedures of the concerned state government the district authority is also empowered to examine the eligibility of the work sanctioned under this particular program select the implementing agencies prioritize how this work will be done how it will be executed and ultimately monitor the scheme at the ground level as well 
Lok Sabha members can thus recommend works within their constituencies and elected members of Rajya Sabha can recommend works within the state of election. Nominated members of both Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha can recommend works anywhere in the country. And do note, as part of this initiative, the Honourable MPs will now be given the flexibility in choosing the works that can be taken under MP Lai scheme provided it leads to creation of durable public assets for larger public good. The MPs will not be required to wait for the actual fund to be released by the Ministry before recommending new projects as they will be allocated annual drawing limits at the beginning of each financial year subject to certain conditions. This is a new update with respect to the MPLAT scheme. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.